This video is going to give you a broad overview of the concepts of Bright Pearl Accounting. There are a number of videos that go into more detail on each topic, so make sure you watch those too. I'm going to give you an introduction to double entry accounting, the balance sheet and the income statement, which is called a profit and loss report in the UK. We're going to look at the chart of accounts, bank accounts, journal types, see which transactions are made automatically by Bright Pearl, and see which transactions you'll need to make manually. Because Bright Pearl has a full accounting system built in, a lot of processes that would otherwise be done by your bookkeeper can be automated. For this reason we describe two types of financial processes. The first is operational accounting, which is recording the financial information related to your day-to-day -day process of buying, selling and updating inventory levels. Brightpool does most of this for you, but it's important to know what's going on behind the scenes. The second type of financial operation is bookkeeping, which is manually recording information that's not directly related to day-to-day -day operations. Things like entering wages, rent, interest payments, and making corrections and adjustments. Brightpool makes operational accounting features such as payment allocation available under the customer and supplier menus, while the bookkeeping tasks are under the accounting menu. Using permissions, you can give more control to your operational staff while reserving the bookkeeping for your qualified bookkeeper. Let's start with the operational accounting. We'll take a set of seven business transactions for a typical retailer and show the accounting that's going on in the background and how it relates to your management reports, the balance sheet and the income statement, or profit and loss. First of all, you place a purchase order with a supplier to let them know you want some inventory. No accounting transactions take place. Next, the inventory arrives and you receive it into stock. It's worth $10, so Brightpool automatically records the fact that you now have $10 of assets. Brightpool is a double entry accounting system, which means that every transaction contains at least two parts, which we split into debits and credits. As you add a number in one place, you have to remove it from somewhere else. You can't just magic money from nowhere. So when we increase inventory or assets, we have to record a matching $10 elsewhere. Technically, we still owe the supplier, but we've not yet received a purchase invoice, so we'll use the inventory received, not invoiced, for the other half of this double entry transaction. Each of these transactions is called a journal, made up of debits and credits. In any journal, the total value of debits must equal the total value of credits. Each amount is assigned to an account code, or nominal code. At any point in time, the balance of an account or nominal code is the sum of all the debits less the credits for that code. So here, for example, we'll have a balance of $10 on the inventory and minus 10 on inventory received, not invoiced. You can see the current balance of all your account codes on the trial balance report. And here we've got the $10 on both sides. The balance sheet shows the balance of your asset and liability codes. Here's what the balance sheet now looks like after we've received inventory. We've got $10 of asset and $10 of liability. When the purchase invoice later arrives from the supplier, we'll assign it to the purchase order. This creates a purchase invoice journal. The purchase invoice journal transfers the $10 balance across from the inventory not received account onto the accounts payable or creditors. Our balance sheet now records that we still have $10 in inventory but we now owe our suppliers $10 instead of having the inventory received, not invoiced. Next, we make a sale. The first thing that happens in a retail scenario is that the customer pays for it. We record an increase on our bank account of $20, and until we confirm the sale and raise an invoice, we technically owe the customer their money back, so we put the balancing $20 on the accounts receivable, or debtors. This is a sales receipt journal. At this point, you'll see negative balances on the accounts receivable or debtors screen because you owe the customer. The sales receipt also shows as a negative asset on the balance sheet, but we do have the positive asset of the credit card payment, so the two cancel each other out. When we ship the goods out note, we need to decrease our inventory asset by $10. This is the cost of goods sold value, which is recorded on the other half of the journal as an expense. This is the first time we see a transaction affecting the profit and loss, or income statement. Recording the cost of goods sold as soon as you ship the sale is called cost of sale accounting, and is the default option in Brightpearl because it lets you report on your profits at any time you like. The other option is periodic accounting, which does not record changes to assets automatically when you receive or ship goods, 
have a look at the Accounting for Inventory video for more detail. We've not yet recognised the revenue by raising a sales invoice, so on the income statement or profit and loss, we see we've made a $10 loss due to the goods shipped. It's only when you invoice the sales order that you confirm the revenue of $20 by inserting a sales invoice journal. This is recorded as sales revenue on the income statement using the product account code, which for this product is merchandise sales. Just like the purchase invoice recorded an amount on the accounts payable or creditors, a sales invoice records an amount on the accounts receivable or debtors. Because this amount has been prepaid, by another matching amount on the accounts receivable, raising the sales invoice simply cancels the balance on the accounts receivable. And you can see the other side of the journal here recorded as sales revenue. The negative asset on the balance sheet has now disappeared, and the accounts receivable report is empty. You now have two transactions on the income statement, the $20 revenue and the $10 cost of sale. These two give a $10 profit. In that example, both the sales invoice and the cost of goods sold were in the same period, so the profit was accurate. However, that's not always the case in the real world. Take the example where you close the sale and raise the invoice in January. Your profit and loss will show entirely income. And then when you ship the goods later in February, your profit and loss for that sale would show purely a loss. What you actually want is a $200 profit. So when you ship after you invoice, you can use the setting for using the invoice date for the cost of goods sold entry. With this turned on, the order shipped in February would have accounting transactions for cost of sale posted into the January period. This would show profit for the month at the expected $200. The other scenario is where you ship the order before you invoice it. In this case, the first period would show just a loss when the cost of goods sold was posted, and the second period in February would just show profit. To cover this situation, you defer the cost of goods sold entry for any orders that are shipped before invoicing. So you'd still see a cost of goods sold on your profit and loss in January, but it would be against the deferred cost of goods sold account. And then when the sale is invoiced in February, it's moved from the deferred cost of goods sold account across to the actual cost of goods sold account. Find these settings in the Accounting Setup area. Finally, we pay our supplier invoice. This creates a purchase payment journal which decreases the bank account balance with the other side of the transaction going against the accounts payable or creditors to clear the debt. And you can see here that the sum of these two will equal zero. At any point in time, you can sum the debits and credits on any particular account, such as the bank account, to give you the current balance. After the set of journals we've just completed, there's a $10 balance on the bank account because we've got $20 come in and $10 go out. The bank activity report in BrightPearl is effectively just a filter on all of your journals to just show those that affect the chosen bank account. Other reports work in a similar way by showing only parts of the complete journal. To see all the debits and credits on all of the journals, go to the general ledger. This set of transactions is the same as I've shown you in Excel. After these transactions, we have no inventory asset because the debits and credits cancel each other out. However, if we chose to report at the end of January the 4th, which is across here, we'd see that at that time we still had $10 in inventory. This is one of the great advantages of double entry accounting. Nothing is deleted or removed and you can create reports for dates in the past. You can also change the sequence of events and you'd end up with the same result. It's just as valid to invoice the sale first and take the payment later, which is more common in a wholesale scenario. If you invoice before taking payment, you'll have a positive balance on the accounts receivable or debtors, which you use to see who owes you money. As we've seen, each debit and credit amount is recorded against an account. These accounts have numbers, which we sometimes call a nominal code. The set of codes is called the chart of accounts. For the time being, all you need to know is that there are five main types of account code. There are assets, there are liabilities, there's equity, there's income, and expenses. Changes to asset, liability, or equity codes will show on your balance sheet, and changes to income or expense codes will show on in your income statement or profit and loss report. The chart of accounts in BrightPull is configurable, with the exception of a few reserved codes such as accounts receivable. 
you get to the Chart of Accounts under the Accounting menu. There's a separate video that goes into more detail on the Chart of Accounts. You can nominate a few of your asset account codes to be bank accounts, which means that they appear in the banking screens and can be used to clear customer or supplier debts. Each of your real-world accounts that carries funds should be added to Brightpearl as a bank account. This includes credit card providers who hold funds for a while before they're cleared into your main bank account. We've seen a few different types of journal in the examples so far. Journal types are used to show transactions in their relevant reports. Brightpearl journal types are two character codes that are explained here. We've got SI for sales invoice, SC for sales credit and SR for sales receipt which pays an invoice or a credit. Similarly, a purchase invoice, a purchase credit, which is paid with a purchase payment. We've got three different types of bank transaction, and then a miscellaneous journal or a year end. We've also got journal types which relate to inventory. Purchase goods in, which is when you receive goods on a purchase order. The sales goods in, which comes from returns from a customer. And then goods out for shipping a sales order. If you delete a goods in batch, it's a GD, or if you make a manual inventory adjustment, it's an IA. If you're working with a landed cost module, which is a separate video, you'll get an LC journal type. When you produce a VAT return, it's a VR. When you're importing opening balances for a new setup, it's an OB. And if you're using the expenses module, it's an EX. You can see the journal type on the general ledger and you can filter the general ledger to show journals of only a certain type. You can't change a journal type. You must have a contact associated with sales or purchase journals, whether that's a customer or a supplier. And conversely, you cannot have a contact associated with banking journals. Brightpell automates most of the operational day-to-day -day accounting for you. It increases inventory asset with a PG when you receive goods. It creates a PI when you record a bill against a purchase order. It creates a sales receipt, an SR, when an order payment is downloaded from a sales channel. It creates a cost of sales entry, a GO, when you ship a goods out note. And it creates a sales invoice when you invoice a sales order. Not everything is automatic though. The following bookkeeping processes will need to be done manually. Sales receipts for customer payments that you don't take online. Supplier or vendor bills for rent and office supplies, which would be a purchase invoice or a bill. Payments from bank accounts to suppliers for your bills, which is a purchase payment. Or payments from bank accounts to wages and contractors or other miscellaneous outgoings, which is a BP or a bank payment. Payments from bank accounts, which might be fees for card processing companies. Transfers from one bank account to another. And then finally, receipts into bank accounts for miscellaneous charges like interest and loans, which would be a BR. Here's a typical bookkeeping task. We're going to record a payment from our bank account for interest expense and because we're using double entry accounting we need to make sure that we enter the expense code. So the first half is the bank account and the second half is the interest expense. When we enter this payment we'll see both a decrease of 250 on the bank account and an increase on the expense account. So assets if you remember are shown on the balance sheet where we can see that the bank account has gone down by 250 and profit and loss is shown on the income statement where we see the 250 on the expense code. Because the expense code is a 7000 code it comes below the gross profit line so operational revenue and operational expenses typically revenue and cost of sales are shown above the gross profit line and give you your gross profit. All the bookkeeping tasks typically occur below the gross profit line and affect your net profit. And that concludes the first video in the introduction to Bright Pearl Accounting.